Test. Check. One, two. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. Meant for somebody else, but not for me. Love was out to get me. That's the way it seemed. Disappointment haunted all my dreams. Then I saw her. This, this, this is an audio test. One, two, three, four. Can I have a little more monitor, please? This, for me, is an unbelievable honor. I'm a little guy from Kearney, Nebraska, the toilet. <laughs> And there have been a host of people in my life along the way that have pushed me to push the envelope. And if I couldn't do that, life isn't worth living. One needs to move ahead. One needs to try new things. It has been an unbelievable ride and an unbelievable career. And if you will cast your minds back a bit, in 1982, 1978 I had a heart attack, 1982 I had a five-way bypass, and three years ago I had a little repipe because, you know, the plumbing gets plugging, plugged, you got to fix it every now and then. But the first time, there was a tour scheduled with Neil, and it's the ultimate honor when he called, when, when I went into the hospital, was going to have surgery, the tour was scheduled, it wasn't on sale yet, and he said, don't worry, when you're able to go, we're going to put the tour back on sale and do it. And he indeed did that, and as a matter of fact, here's the kind of guy he is. He took my doctor along. <laughs> he didn't trust my word, and he said, I want to talk to your, they called me, he said, I want to talk to your doctor, and he took my doctor from Kearney, Nebraska, on the tour with us for about three weeks, and made me walk around the arenas during sound check. A lot of my musician friends will remember that. So, it is indeed an honor, and I have loved pushing the envelope, and if I never did another show, that would be just fine. But as Neil said, I hope we will do some more shows and we will be able to go out and try some new things. There are a host of things that I, I don't know, I don't think I was very innovative. I don't, I don't know if I was innovative, innovative. I'll tell you what I was. I was a guy that didn't have any money. I still don't. Um, and one of the things you had to do is you had to invent things, and necessity is the mother of invention. You all would agree with that. Many of the things that people have talked about tonight uh, are out of necessity. And the first flying sound system, there, was there a picture of it, the flying junkyard, as Patrick used to call it? <laughs> well, it looked like a flying junkyard. Um, that was out of necessity. Sonny and Cher came to me, their, their tour uh, production people, and said, listen, you can have the tour, your little company from Kearney, Nebraska, but you cannot block any seats with speakers. And I got to thinking about this, and I thought, well, that's not exactly an easy thing to do. I had seen um, some Bruce Jackson with, with Claire, with Elvis, had done a show or two with a, a, a rigged system. And I'd done a couple of things and tried to do it, and it didn't work very well. But I had about six weeks to develop a hanging system that we could tour with. And so the Flying Junkyard uh, came out of our shop. And 
gee, we did a lot of things that probably weren't very safe. Um, probably, well, I did have a structural engineer look at things. Uh, we didn't have chain motors. We had a, a drum winch system, and we hung a system, uh, clusters that, on, on a grid that were, was four foot wide and 18 feet long, with a winch on sitting on top of it that was hanging on quarter inch cable. Lots of things along the way. Rigging hardware from Aeroquip, uh, which was aircraft things, uh, developed for the concert series and some of those type of things. A multi-core snake. We used to tape cables together. And I said, hmm, how about having one cable with a jacket around the outside of it? Uh, how about having a box on the end that you could plug the microphones into? So that's how some of those things came about. And all of those things, whether, whether I dreamed them up or some of you dreamed them up, is why our industry is where it's at today. And in those days, guys, you couldn't buy anything. Manufacturers didn't. They, they had theater systems. They didn't have touring loudspeaker systems. The other thing is there are a host of people that have gone through our company, my company, which now it's just me, um, but have gone on to work in the industry, and I'm very proud of them. Um, and there are so many of them that I couldn't possibly name them all. And there are a lot of them here tonight that have shown up, and that's an amazing thing to me. The, the other thing is that there are people like Patrick, there are people like my good buddy Sam Helms, who's a rep on the East Coast, my friends at Yamaha, uh, my friends at JBL, formerly people at Alltech, that have supported me, and manufacturers like Alltech, like Yamaha, and so on, have always risen to the occasion to support us, and they should be commended for that. The other thing is that, what about the people, no one tonight has mentioned the people that are left behind at home. What, what that does to them to have their, their mates on the road, on the road, constantly. Well, I am one lucky guy. I have two grown children that have turned out to be an asset to society in spite of me. I have three grandchildren, three beautiful grandchildren. I have a partner of 20 years um, that looks after the inn when I go out on the road to make a buck and make, make the salaries for the inn for the rest of the employees there. Um, so I want to applaud all the people who stay behind and support us while we're out on the road. And let me ask you a question. When you get home, don't they think you're just out on the road having a good time? They sure do. Well, we do have a good time. And in closing, I want to say thank you to my friend Neil Diamond, who has allowed me to be creative. It, it is not often that technical people are allowed to be creative by artists. It's very unusual. And I am most proud of the relationship. I'm most proud of the, the, the fact that he has allowed me to be out on the end of the limb with the saw and occasionally come really close to sawing the limb off, but has always been there to support us, and the show goes on. So I'm, I'm very, very honored by this tonight, and I'm just a guy from Kearney, Nebraska, who's doing what I do, having a good time. Thank you. Thank you.